parapets obviously are exposed to the weather on three sides. Brick veneer pretty much has a controlled setting behind it on one side, only exposed to the weather on its face. But a parapet, if you want to consider this the roof side, would get wet on its back, on its top, and also on the face where the veneer is. Proper flashing in a parapet is very important. Imagine, if you will, for a moment that you have a parapet wall and you've designed a, a coping out of precast or stone. Usually the pieces are four or five foot long. Would you not have a soft joint, a caulk joint at each end of that piece of stone? You would, wouldn't you? How often, unless there's a leak in the building, is someone going to get up and properly maintain those soft joints? Usually doesn't happen very often. So, a piece of through wall flashing continuously underneath the coping at the top of the parapet wall is very important. Of course, then you'd have the roof membrane from the backside coming up. And on the front side, maybe just above ceiling height in the first floor or the upper floor of the building, you'd have a piece there as well. Now what you're looking at now is a piece of stone cap with a little anchor that's uh, sticking up there to accept it or to keep it in place, which would have to be caulked around, of course. But you can see here how the through wall flashing should be installed. Very nice example. And finally, if you have a metal coping at the top of the wall, which is fine. Um, Keep in mind that in a wind-driven rain, water can actually hit the wall and climb it a bit. So that coping would need to come down over the face of the wall a minimum of four inches to make sure it stays watertight. And it might be nice to caulk the leading edge as well so that water can't be blown up underneath the coping. Parapets, just by nature, leak if not properly detailed and constructed with good flashing procedures.